regular meeting of council on Monday, March the 19th of order. We have uh, one late item to add to the agenda, and that is uh, to add to item 12, uh, number six under communications. And we have uh, a letter to add from uh, Minister Ida, Ida Chong. So uh, with that change, Council, if I can get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you. Discussion? None. All those in favor? None opposed? Motion is carried. I just, before we go on to the minutes, I'd like to speak uh, to uh, residents and, and Council about the uh, recent passing of a former uh, alderman uh, from Esquimalt, Mr. Robert Henry, known as Bob Jillian. Uh, he was chairman of the Esquimalt Parks and Recreation Commission and an alderman between the years of 1977 to 83. That's a significant time. And so our condolences go out to the family. We'll move on to the minutes of the meetings. We have the minutes of special meeting with council February 27th. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Any errors, omissions, changes? Seeing none, all those in favor? None opposed. Motion is carried. Minutes of the special meeting of council March 5th. I need a motion to adopt. Move adoption. Seconder. Second. Any errors, omissions, changes, Council Green? Uh, just a Sorry. note that under Arts, Culture, and Special Events for the list of new committee members, Sue Donaldson was unable to accept. Thank you. With that change, uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion is carried. Minutes of the regular meeting of Council, regular meeting of Council, March 5th. Um, uh, I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Any errors, omissions, or changes? I have a comment on page six. Uh, and it's uh, the wording of the last sentence. Uh, it was really that we weren't presenting about the uh, trophy because it wasn't ours to present. It was that we were congratulating uh, both Bev Hopkins and Councillor Brain uh, uh, on winning the trophy for the Victoria uh, Flower Count launch in 2012. So I just wanted to be uh, <coughs> a little bit more clear on that. With those changes, Council, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None. Motion is carried. We have the minutes of the special meeting of council March 6th and 7th. Move adoption. Second. Any errors, omissions, or changes? And I have one on page 18. Um, the public input. Uh, I believe and the council can help with this. Uh, Nick, and it said surname unclear. I believe it was Kovac. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I don't know whether anyone can help with the previous one. There is a, a surname missing as well. Okay. Oh, that was uh, on page 14. The previous meeting. John. Last name unclear, resident or from oldest one. Old. I know you talking about. If you would <laughs> mind that too, staff, <laughs> that would be helpful. Uh, and yeah, yeah, and for, so that I'm aware, if you can let me know if you don't get those names clearly, and I'll stop and make sure we get them. So with that change, I will uh, call the question. Oh, uh, Councillor Hanubi. Uh, thank you. On page. Uh, 21, uh, 7 of 9 for, for the set of minutes, March 6 and 7. Uh, wasn't really clear. I was having trouble with the um, motion that was 
in the, the first, the second motion there, grants to other organizations. And so it was moved and seconded, and then it was defeated with four in favor. So I was thinking, there must be one that was not quite right, but I think yeah, is that correct? We, we can't have defeated it with four in favor. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was defeated. It was defeated. Does anyone remember if they were not? So under grants to other organizations on page 21, it's uh, the third paragraph now. It was to be a zero increase for 2012 and the original motion. Councillor Brain made it, Councillor Humble be supported, so Morrison and I um, did not. Oh, I get it. So basically, it should be reversed if it was we said 0% increase, so it should be everybody else. Well, we've got four in favor, and oh, it should be four opposed. Oh. It should be four. It should be, yeah, I think. It should be four yeah. opposed. Yeah, it should say Brain, Huddleby, Morris, and the Kai were opposed. We're, we were opposed. No, no, because we were Brain and Huddleby put the most. I was in favor of a 0% increase, so maybe I should. You made the motion. You made yeah, the motion. I mean, so I was in, was it the, you made that the, the grant zero be a 0% increase, which is what I was willing to go with. And then you guys all wanted more of an increase. So, so, was so is there any support? clarification from Morrison and Mackay that you may not have supported that? motion was for a zero percent increase and it was defeated so that's why right it to okay 50 percent and the 20 percent and yeah. why you recall it but i want to speak for councillor mckay but we were looking for somewhere i think there was proposed 50 percent and i think the councillor mckay and myself were looking for something between zero percent and 50 percent i think you should suggest 25 percent i think i said but in this motion then you must have been against that's it as right. opposed yeah. to support yeah, that's right we that was not yeah how we were. So does that help in terms of clarifying? We'll, we'll check our notes and uh, confirm that we have it right Thank you very much. Okay. Um, do, you, do we need to then uh, uh, table this until we have received the, the further information from you? So I need to move to the table. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor?
experience and asked why I joined the tour. I asked my wife, she said, yes, please go. So I did. <laughs> uh, it just, it, it, it's been a difficult mission for us. We've lost 158 or 158 lives have been, have been lost. Uh, and it's just, you know, there's just such a great bridge between our communities and the military. And being somewhat of a hybrid of being both a military person and, and a civilian, uh, I just thought it'd be nice to bring some sort of closure to that mission from from us in Victoria. And I came down on my leave last October uh, in the quest of getting the municipal flag from the staff. And uh, they gave it to me a bit reluctant. Um, I was going to give them my visa. But they said, no, that'll be fine. We'll just, we'll just give you the, uh, the flag. And I thought it'd be nice just to sort of bring closure to the mission and uh, have our flag flown there just one last time to remind just how lucky we are being, being Canadians. I just want to thank you for stealing all my thunder. Uh, it's less than I have to say, and I just want to thank you very, very much for, for giving me the flag, and you know, we can just have it to show that we really, I, I think just how lucky we are just being Canadians. And for me, it brings closure to a 36-year career, because I'm now retired as Mr. Carter, so that's, that's good for me. So I want to thank you very much, and I just want to, here, just uh, present this to you. Like, 
Does it get used in an, on another non-sidewalk project in the two, 2012 budget? Or is it rolled forward to sidewalks for next year? Or is it returned to sender unused? And I'd like to know. Thank you. We, we do have a sidewalk program. So what we are constantly trying to do is to upgrade sidewalks, curbs, et cetera. So in, in terms of your, your specific question, I don't have the answer for that now, but we can certainly get back to it. OK, and my point is, there is an answer. And if the money's there, then it doesn't matter which side of the street the, on which the, the sidewalk is built, because the money is there. So money is not an issue. So, uh, yeah. you know, like that's why I want to know the answer to that question. The, the clarification we'll have to get back to you on. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Are there other members of the public that wish to speak? Any other members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll move along. We have a delegation, Mr. Scott Petro. And uh, Scott is from Floyd's Hairstyling for Men. Scott, you have five minutes. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. I've been in business at the Spymo for about 17 years. And throughout the 17 years, I've had glorious mishaps with the Spymo municipality, including a large construction site that lasted almost two years and seven months. During that time, I asked the bylaw officials to watch the parking in front of and around the shop. Uh, nothing was really done, to win. no tickets given out at any point in time. At one point I had to call the Victoria Police Department because there had been a car actually parked in one hour parking for approximately seven days. And the reason why I was able to call the Victoria Police Department was simply that the torch for the Olympics was coming down that road and I deemed it a security threat. The Victoria Police, having me given the number of the bylaw officer, called the bylaw officer, which he was out there in the next hour, to actually take a look at this car and eventually have it removed. That's the kind of extreme action I have to take, which I'm sure is very embarrassing to the bylaw officer, and please call him in regards to many of the people knowing you already from this. It's been repetitive and ongoing. So what happens now? Shipyard moves into the offices next to my shop. There's no other businesses in that area and the shipyard office employees start parking on the street. Repetitive, day after day, hour after hour. Sometimes they get clever, because you know, government employees will get clever, and they'll start to shift their cars, well, if you move your car here, two hours will move mine here, and we'll play a little silly bugger game, and we'll be able to keep our cars there as much as we want. So on it goes, now we're into two and a half years of fighting to try and get this bylaw somehow just get somebody to mark a tire and come out in an hour and give them a ticket. Give them a negative stimulus so that they don't continue to park there so we can continue to do business. Because if we don't have parking, we're out of business. And the parking lot that is allotted for the apartment is actually taken over by the shipyard employees as well. So I got nowhere to go with this. Either the, the bylaw is enforced or we're going to be pushed out of business. Now, the other day I got a letter, an email, and five minutes, I'm not sure I could read it all in five minutes, but the drive from this city hall to my shop takes approximately 60 seconds. Putting a line on a tire takes exactly 2.2 seconds if you're slow, and then coming back an hour later to give a person a ticket takes about 10 to 15 seconds. This letter stated that my allegations I must also state that your allegations that staff are simply ignoring your request is not true. I have recently been with the building inspector, who is also the bylaw officer, who advises me that this department has been in fact involved for years in attempting to regulate the parking at this location on Admiral's Road. If that was true, I would not have needed to call the police when the torch was coming, and that car wouldn't have been parked there for seven days. Seven days in a one-hour parking. Right? So what do I get after that? I get this, this paper. And what it is, is for me to stop calling the numbers for City Hall and put it in paper, in writing, that I wish to have some form of action taken in regards to this file I do. Don't you think 
I should have had this two and a half years ago? So all I'm asking is for not the bylaw about parking to be changed. It's fine. One and two hours is fine on both sides. That's excellent. It just needs to be enforced. You made a deal with the owner of the building, Gerfal Atwell, and you expropriated a piece of his parking lot land, and his deal was as long as you could keep the street parking available for commercial. By not enforcing that bylaw, you have reneged on that deal. And I've been informed Gerb Paul Atwell as to that. So if you think I'm going away, I've fought 13 years to stay in this community. I'm not going away. I'm going to be a pain in the butt. So get ready for a fight or fix it. Thank, Thank you very, very much. on now to uh, the hearing, notice of hearing, and the purpose of this application is that the applicant is requesting a variance to zoning bylaw 1992, number 2050, authorizing the construction of a replacement deck and new stairs on the principal building within 2.5 meters of the existing accessory building. I will first ask the Director of Development Services to give us an overview and then uh, the proponent ha will have an opportunity and then we will go and, and get pub seek public input. Your Worship, Members of Council, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is an application that staff have received uh, for a variance uh, from the setback between a principal building and an auxiliary building. Uh, normally we ask for a 2.5 meter separation. In this case, it's uh, 1.45 meters. Uh, this is a set of stairs attached to a uh, deck. It's not like one building, one large building next to another building. So staff uh, believe that this is minor uh, in nature. It's been to the uh, advisory planning commission. They also have supported this application. Uh, council may notice that this did not come to the committee as a whole. Uh, had it gone to the committee whole process, all the other processes, it might have taken about 10 weeks. Uh, staff believe that this is minor enough that it can come directly to council and make the process about two or three weeks. So we have uh, gone uh, outside of normal protocol and we hope that uh, doesn't it upset the council too much. But yeah, so staff support it, APC support it, we don't see any serious problems. Thank you very much. Is the proponent of the audience? Would you like to come forward and speak to it? Do you require us to come forward and speak? Or do Not you at have, all. If you have all the information, we'll back. Thanks very much. Before we went through that exercise. 
to ensure that council is um, comfortable with all of our policies and objectives. So, thank you. Council, do you have questions? I'm also uh, pleased that we're able to come in within a reasonable number. My question is around uh, some of this amount includes uh, items that we're still awaiting information on. So that if in fact the information comes back and there's a discussion, this number could go down, but it won't likely, well, it can't go up. And that's my understanding. So I know there's three three positions that uh, three or four positions we're talking about uh, that would be added, but are within this number. And should we not go and support all those new positions, then in fact the number would come down. Staff, yeah. um, I think a point of clarification through the chair: the number probably would come down if those reports came back to council before the tax rates were approved. I don't believe that's going to be possible. Those reports will come back. Some of them may not uh, be able to come back until after council has already approved the bylaws for tax rates. So we cannot change the budget at that point. What would happen is if we didn't end up spending that money that's in the budget, that surplus will be carried forward to next year to reduce whatever increases we have for next year. Be carried forward as part of surplus. So I can't, I can't guarantee that all three, I think there was four reports that were going to come back on personnel issues, and I don't know that all of those can come back prior to the, I believe the 7th of May is when we anticipate adopting the tax rate and financial plan bylaws. So um, those that don't come back, it won't impact this rate because we have to finalize those rates before the 15th of May. Thank you. Further? So, yes, uh, further supplementary. So that, that's a good explanation, I understand that. But uh, I guess my point is, as long as we're clear around approving this, is not approval carte blanche for what was discussed at the budget. We may still go back and, uh, and not approve some things, even though the monies will be there and will be carried forward to next year. 
staff, do you want to add anything yeah, further? To the chair, that, that was very clear to staff, and it's actually contained in this report. It says that there was approval in principle pending before us. So, yeah. Thank you. Councilor Morrison. Um, <clears throat> The, the 2.77%, uh, like Councillor Underby and others, are quite impressed. We, we were able to to get to that point from not all that long ago, uh, that are a couple, few weeks back, we were talking about 5.18% tax increases. Um, and I know, I guess what I would like to do is put this into context. That as part of the strategic planning, as part of the commitment of every member of this new council has been to deliver uh, you know, as much creativity as possible and the end result being property tax relief for the residents of Squimal. And I think this delivers that, but I, as I say, in order, in order to achieve that measurement, I, I think I need, we need some context of comparison with previous years. And I know, as far as I can remember as a taxpayer in the last couple of years, my tax rates have been going up. Well, all of our tax rates have gone up 3.9%, I believe, the last two budgets. And prior to that, I don't remember. I do recall not too long ago, there was a year when it was 7%. Um, that's relative recent memory. So in the, uh, other years, it's been around 5%, somewhere in those that area. So we're at 2.77%. I'm wondering if that can answer this question. When was the last time we had a rate as low as 2.77%? Um, if that information can be provided to you. Oh, I can attest to the fact that we have is that it hasn't happened in the last nine years. So I, I'd have to research history, go back through that. I've been here that long, and, and I believe the lowest that we've had in those years has been 3.54. So that, sorry, but through the chair, so that's significant. In, in a very difficult economic climate, uh, where you know, operational costs, of course, are, are skyrocketing in terms of energy costs and everything else that, that is uh, putting pressure on same pressures that are being put on your household and being put on our municipality. And in at least, it's been at least a decade since we've seen a tax rate this low. Um, and we're still, this is a year when we're putting on a, a very uh, impressive centennial celebration, which is not done for free. Um, we have great volunteers who are extraordinary, but they cannot print money. So this council has had to provide that money, those, those, those resources. So all, all that context that I'm talking about I think it's quite extraordinary this council, as a team, has worked with staff to deliver a 2.77% uh, rate increase. So, and uh, I hope that this will be a trend for the, the next few budgets going over the next term of this, this council. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Morrison. Councilor Shinbeck. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you for your comments. I'm going to uh, be supporting this report on the 2.77% increase and along with Councillor Morrison and, and the other councillors, I think some really good work has been done this year to, to maintain that. Uh, on, a, on a small side note, Your Worship, through you, the staff, I know when we were talking about the budget, I got a little emotional at uh, debating one particular topic, and, and for that, the staff, that was not my intent. I, I did not mean to upset anybody. I was trying to argue a philosophical point, and obviously I didn't do a good job at it. So, for that, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shinbai. Uh, I will look for a motion. So moved. Yeah. Second. So we have a motion. We've already got a motion. Okay. motion first. Then, then um, staff, you, have, you would to like to. the chair, I just wanted to sort of, well, not really throw a wrench into things, but throw a good wrench into things. But it's um, a, the late item on council actually affects the 2.77%. And I'd like to make that correction in the motion. If council is going to make that motion, um, the tax rate uh, will actually be 2.49% with the $65,000 that is coming from the government for our centennial celebrations. So um, we should amend that motion. Talking. So mover. I'm quite happy. Yeah. <laughs> with that amendment. Thank you. Uh, so with that amendment, I just want to add my uh, congratulations to council and to staff. There's been significant work. We are looking at $7 million worth of infrastructure uh, going into this community to maintain it, at, maintain the services at the level that, that you um, desire. Uh, 
uh, most of that infrastructure really not affecting your tax rate. And uh, in order to do that, that requires uh, staff from previous years and every year to be very diligent and wary of, of, of saving money toward future or infrastructure investment. And if we in Esquimo have had good staff looking, looking out for when uh, infrastructure starts to wear away, we have uh, contingency funds. And you're hearing that other municipalities are struggling with those reserve funds, that they don't have them or they don't have enough in them. And so I would like to congratulate staff and I do know that as much as we like to see uh, our tax increase uh, at, at nothing, um, this is a significant, uh, least small amount. Uh, and uh, the benefit is, is that you have rec centers, arenas, your own police force, your own uh, fire department, uh, and, uh, and uh, enjoy many services that other communities do not. So, the motions are uh, are there, and uh, I will call the question after Councillor Morrison. <laughs> okay, so just makes one further quick statement. Thank you, through the chair, and, and I think that's really important that we communicate that this is not a bare bones budget. This is very much a status quo budget. And what I say, what I mean by that is, the, the members of this community will not see any significant reduction in the services that they've come to expect. And as the mayor has just outlined, your parks and recreation will still be maintained status quo, uh, your roads will be maintained status quo, the library hours will still, as far as I know, be provided on Sunday morning, uh, Sunday uh, opening times as well. All those wonderful expectations that we have as, as a community will continue, and we still get to have a 2.49% increase in order to maintain all that. So that's, that's quite extraordinary in that context as well. Thank you. I'll call the question, all those in favor? Those opposed? Uh, motion is carried. Thank you. And thank you, staff, for all the hard work. Engineering and Public Works, Animal Control Services. Anything further to add to your report? Uh, a few points, Your Worship. Um, this uh, is a generally a service that the township has contracted out, uh, animal control. When we went out for the looking for an outside contractor, we used a request for a proposal. Uh, part of that request for a proposal was a weighted evaluation criteria in order to pick a preferred proponent, um, which is shown on page 53. So the cost of the contract was worth 35 points, service provision, methodology, and task list, 30 points, experience and capacity of the proponents, 25, and past performance was 10. Using that evaluation criteria, we ranked the two proponents that came, that bid on or submitted proposals for it, and Victoria Animal Control came first in that ranking. Uh, it was, I have to say, close uh, between the two proponents. Uh, there was not a lot of point difference, but you know, under the duty of fairness and care that we as the owner have to exercise, it doesn't have to be a whole lot of points. It's, it could be one point for as getting as close as that. We do have a requirement as the owner to act in a fair capacity and treat uh, all component, uh, proponents the same way and evaluate over the same methodology. And that was uh, how we carried out this proposal evaluation. Thank you. Um, just for this council's benefit, uh, I want to let you know that this was uh, something that came up at last council regarding the service provision by uh, the um, CRD. Uh, and we did ask staff when the opportunity came around uh, at the end of that contract to really go out and look at what other services were out there. So, uh, that's a, a little bit of history. Uh, you do have a recommendation before you. I don't know if you have questions for staff first. Councillor Hunt. Thank you. Um, and through you to uh, Mr. Miller. So, I have a couple of questions, if I might. 
Um, it's called Victoria Animal Control Services, so they're not affiliated with the municipality or the city of Victoria as a local government, but it's that's their name. Is that correct? That is my understanding. Absolutely. Thank you. I am really pleased to see that there will be increased patrol time because I know that was a significant issue that had been raised by residents. Um, it is a little bit more money, but it seems to me that those were offset, and you explained that very well, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. I know that with CRD, if someone had to go and pick up their animal, they had to go out the peninsula. So is this particular um, uh, service then, their holding compound is in the city of Victoria? Your Worship, through the councillor, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what we wrote in the proposal. Uh, I have to realize it's been a while, but I believe it was we had uh, defined a certain number of kilometers from, from the municipal hall here that the holding facility had to be in. And their facility falls within that range. Thank you. So then, just for clarification, it's closer than the CRD one. I would probably. have to, I would have to, probably is, but I have to double check the proposal just because I don't have that coming to the top of my head right now. That's fine. It, that was a curiosity on my part, but uh, I'll hear back from you at some other point. Thank you, Thank you. I have Councillor McConnell. Thank you, uh, to, to Mr. Miller. Um, looks like a fantastic job you've done on it. One question is, uh, is this seven days a week? Is this Monday to Friday? How does this contract work? Uh, the patrol time is set up on a weekly basis. I think that would be a point of negotiation with Victoria Animal Control to what times we'd want to see. They do offer overtime um, call-out services if need be. Again, that would be a point of discussion. Uh, realizing that uh, the more call-outs and overtime we request, uh, the bigger the bill would be. Just that uh, I can, I guess, confirm, I've taken my family down to Fleming Beach uh, on weekends, and that's a hard time to find somebody to control animals, because people seem to know that when Saturday comes and Sunday comes, there's no bylaw officers or anybody around, so my dog can run through the water and splash and knock over kids, and I think this is what we're trying to improve. So that's the only reason I was asking that question. You know, if we're only working Monday to Friday, then we're back to the same situation we had before. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, Councillor Green. Um, I have a comment, and then I'll pass the motion if you're ready for it at that point. Um, I agree with, uh, through you to staff, I agree with uh, Councillor Mackay as a, a responsible dog, dog owner. Uh, I know what that park is like, but also I do know that people know the schedule of the CRD's current timing, so I think it's really important when you look at negotiations to, to flex that time a little bit. You know, one week you're there on weekends, one week you might not be, then you're there Monday to Friday. So I think we need to uh, make sure that they're not quite as obvious about it as they have been in the past. Um, they, they had pretty set times as to when they were going to be there. There is also people, um, it's been witnessed by residents, people opening the door of their car, dropping their dog off, going to Tim Hortons for a coffee, coming back and picking up their dog. Um, and I do believe one resident commented that they had a Victoria sticker in their window. So it is a, a regional park with some, some serious dog issues. So I look forward to the extra hours for sure. And if you'd like, uh, Mayor, I can uh, pass a, the recommendation. Do you have one more? Uh Question, I believe. So, yes. Uh, and then certainly come back. Uh, uh, through you, Your Worship, the, the, the staff. Uh, I, I feel good about this too. But the, the one question I had was on. Uh, you mentioned in your report that about the uh, impoundment and that uh, that you're in, in the process of looking at cost sharing uh, with a successful and that that was one thing that was missing in our previous uh, arrangement we had with CRD. Could you maybe expand a little bit on that? Uh, basically, in the RFP, we had requested if there would be a cost-sharing uh, partnership between the township and the proponents. Um, 
Victoria Animal Patrol offered that. Uh, CRD did not. Um, that's really the meat of it all. It's just there was basically some cash back coming to us from the impoundment of animals. Thank you. There has been expression here by council to uh, make sure that within the negotiation there is included something that ensures that by law enforcement occurs throughout the week uh, in a variable fashion. Uh, and so I'm wondering whether uh, within your motion you can include something to that effect. Um, so I would pass the staff recommendations, point one and two, with uh, an inclusion of in the negotiations that we look at varied times that cover seven, seven days, like a, the, a variety of times in the seven days. Second, please. I'll second that. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any Shirley Bond, Minister of Justice, regarding the development of strategic plan for policing in British Columbia. This is something, Council, that we can receive, or we can, because of the uniqueness of our uh, situation, perhaps provide information to UBCM should they want to um, uh, include any information of a very special nature. Um, to, to it, and that's why I wanted to uh, keep it separate in order to address it, and I'm happy to write a letter to UBCM um, to make them aware of our situation, if you feel that that would be appropriate. If not, I will get uh, entertain a motion to be Council Brink. Just a question, uh, Your Worship. Um, I've had some community members uh, express an interest in, in being a part of this, how would they go about doing that? Can they, or do they have to be appointed by a municipality that is currently, that currently has an RCMP contract? This, this really doesn't talk about how you get involved other than it is going through uh, the provincial government. It doesn't even really say how UBCM is going to be involved. So that's why I felt that it was important that we send a letter to UBCM. Uh, this is not, uh, specifically regarding uh, just uh, RCMP either. It doesn't help your question, but I would suggest sending a letter, uh, speaking to our MLA, and or sending a letter to uh, Shirley Bond. May I, sorry, through the chair, may I also suggest that, uh, like uh, Councillor Brain, we also received expression of interest, and while we that might not necessarily be able to act on that tonight. I think we should provide this letter, uh, forward this letter on to the uh, Squimalt Residents Association and the Squimalt Chamber of Commerce um, so that if they do want to become involved, uh, there's that opportunity. The only 
only concern that I have in doing that is that um, this is this is really through UBCM, um, so the, that if it gets forwarded to them, that they cannot connect with UBCM in order to to access how to get involved. Could, could they not? Sorry, through the chair, could they not do that access through through us? Through our they, they can go to the minister because this doesn't indicate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, unless you've read something in it that I haven't, uh, where or how there will be uh, uh, Just the input, under, yeah. although it does say two. these stakeholders from whom we will be seeking representation. So mm -hmm. it's preliminary, but I would, I would suggest that they contact the ministry as to how they could get involved. Okay, and so I guess my point would be that they wouldn't know about this unless we were to forward it to those two organizations. Um, it does say under point number two, citizen engagement process, including interactive website, that might be something where citizens may want. Uh, well, I, we already know, in fact, there has been some citizens expressing um, But, But yeah, I, I see no harm in just simply forwarding this for information to those two, to the Esquimalt Chamber of Commerce and the Esquimalt Residents Association. With, with the explanation? With, with the explanation that the chair has suggested. I'm not really sure what else to do with it. I, I understand that you're wanting people to, to know about the process right. as it comes forward. Um, I'm not sure whether this letter is really the way to do it, but at least getting it out there might help. Oh, Talk just for clarity, I, I'm wondering, we have the letter as an FYI. There's nothing for us to read. As usual with provincial politics, it's not. You're not asking us for any no. any involvement here. It's just to have a nice day. So, uh, yeah, I could absolutely share it with others, but at the same time, it's just uh, it's been a nice read. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Humphrey, um, thank you, Chair. Um, I would be interested in um, your sending a letter to advise uh, UBCM, and we need to, uh, the Minister of Justice, that uh, we are interested in uh, the, the plan and would like to provide uh, input if there was an opportunity to do so. So I, I would like to just put it out there that we say, yeah, here we are, uh, but not be specific because there's something to really be specific about. You're putting that so as a motion? Yeah, I, yes, I would make that a motion. You're a seconder to that? Second. Thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we do have uh, Councillor Morrison's um, um, discussion as to sending it forward to the committee groups, as it, community groups as well. You know, I, would, I would just add that as a friendly amendment to the motion. That's a two part motion, I would say. So that would be fine. Okay, no further discussion, then all those in favor. None opposed, motion is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the letter from uh, Mr. Matlock from West Bay Residents Association Council. And it, uh, it would be uh, my suggestion that this be referred to staff for a report and comment. So moved. Second. Thank you. Discussion? None. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion is carried. Here's a letter from Jeff Young, Capital Regional District Board, in response to our letter. I made a motion to receive that. Move receipt with small discussion. Seconder. Second. Thank you. Councilor Bray. Do they not get it? <laughs> really all I have to say. There's still no connection to D&D &D and C-SPAN. It just frustrates me. Not all roads lead to Uptown. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hunter. Thank you, Chair. I would like to congratulate you on being appointed as a uh, member of the uh, Toronto Commission. I think that's a very uh, good appointment for us. I think that you have an opportunity to make your comments and support uh, what we're trying to do here. So I, I think that's great. Um, 
this is a uh, addressing the comments uh, made by uh, Terry Young. It kind of says something, but kind of doesn't. So I'm sure that you will uh, help hold the uh, him to be accountable for his comments as well. Thank you, and uh, I want to express my appreciation for previous council and this council in, in pushing that forward uh, uh, because. Although it goes back and forth between Oak Bay and Esquimalt, it, it really is um, the uh, insistence of councils in saying Esquimalt needs to have a voice uh, on the transit commission that I believe that is, is what has got us um, the ability to have, have a person sitting on that commission. And I look forward to participating on your behalf. Um, so we have the motion to receive that, and then we, and it's, it's been seconded. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion is carried. We have a letter from Reed Jorgensen, and I just wanted to draw that to your attention and uh, include for the public's knowledge the um, uh, link to the website, uh, to the YouTube video that previous council saw that expresses from the school the value of this program and when you see the uh, YouTube video it's it's more about the off ice learning that the kids have got through the benefit of having this on ice program and uh, it's, it's just a wonderful video so I don't know whether I need to read this extra long link out to you at this time or I can just provide it to you so you can put it in the minutes would be terrific because I do want the public to have the opportunity to see it again. I'm going to ask for a five minute adjourn uh, or uh, recess. Oh, sorry, we need to receive receive that letter and yep. more too. I'll, I'll move receipt. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And we have the communication of uh, item six from Minister Ida Chong, giving us notification of the $75,000 funding for our centennial celebrations, which has been provided by the province. And council, I just want to add my congratulations to our staff. Um, uh, Richie Morrison went down there and uh, basically went in cap in hand and uh, was able to very quickly get, uh, by presenting a good uh, piece of documentation as to where we wanted to put this money, um, uh, was able to, to work this through and uh, there really was very little to no pushback uh, as to uh, what was presented. So, With the support of some solid volunteers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the committee uh, uh, and, and, and staff work, work uh, you know, the, the volunteers are incredible. And, uh, um, you know, to the committee chair and co-chair, uh, as well as all of the other committee members. And uh, I was very pleased to be a, a small part in that as well. So uh, I need a motion to receive. So I'm with congratulations. Yeah. Seconder and then Councilor Moore. Just, and just to reinforce that, it was sort of a throwaway line earlier with the Chief Administration Officer, but just to drive home the, the, the work of those volunteers that we just spoke of. So it saved every taxpayer in this community, uh, according to my math, 0.28% uh, off their tax rates. Because as we heard tonight, it went from um, 2.77 down to 2.49. So that was the work of the volunteers. Had they just decided, yeah, not worth the trouble, if that would have cost all of us. So, so certainly that has uh, paid for paid every resident, uh, um, not only in the, in the enjoyment of celebrating the, the centennial, but also saving our tax bill as well. So excellent kudos. Thank you. And, and I believe you seconded it. I seconded it. Thank you. I'll call the question. All, all those in favor? Any opposed? You're opposed? No, I'm in favor. Delayed reaction. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now I will call a quick five minute recess and then we come back to a, a terrific presentation on the village uh -huh. project. Five minutes, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everyone.
everyone, we will uh, reconvene. And yeah. we uh, do have a rise of report, and I'm going to insert it now before the presentation. There are two items that we will be rising and reporting on. The first is that Council, council appoint Daryl McLean as the Township's Interim Bylaw Enforcement Officer, who is henceforth authorized to enforce the Township of Esquimalt's Municipal Bylaws in accordance with the Community Charter and the Municipality's Bylaws, including the Ticket Information Utilization Bylaw 2005, number 2619, as amended. And the second is a resolution that Council write a letter to the Ministry of National Defense to indicate our concerns in the recent decisions, uh, with the recent decisions made that have an impact on our community without uh, adequate consultation. With a copy to the Base Commander, Admiral MP, and Minister Duck. We now move on to our public. I wonder if the chair could explain, just so people don't know, uh, who Daryl McLean is. Thank you. Daryl McLean, thank you, thank you for that opportunity because I'm sitting here beaming that, that we <laughs> actually have <laughs> Daryl McLean back with us. Uh, Daryl was our former inspector uh, of the West Division. Uh, took a short uh, sabbatical, uh, actually a, a short uh, um, time in retirement and has decided to come back and, and uh, assist us with our bylaws. And I can't think of a better person uh, to help us with that uh, area of challenge. So welcome back to, uh, in, uh, to uh, Daryl McLean. Thank you for that point. We now move on to the presentation and this will be done by Mr. Norm Hodgson and it's really to help uh, bring us up to date with uh, the Esquimalt Village project. So this is something that, although on the books a long time, it's been a while since we've got, come back to that update. So this will help us to move forward. Welcome, Norm. Thank you. Thank you. Your Worship and uh, members of council, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a um, pleasure to be back. I was checking our file on this job and noted that we started this work in 2007, so we're into our fifth year. And uh, um, I, I, it's been a while, frankly, uh, since I, I was last back uh, presenting to you. And so it's a little bit of a refresher, I think, for me as well. And I gather there, there are now four new council members, so I'm hoping that uh, tonight we can uh, uh, pass on to you some information about some of the thinking that went into uh, this project. <coughs> I also want to introduce uh, Jay Wallenberg of Coriolis Consulting. Um, I made a recommendation, uh, gosh, it must be over a year ago now, uh, a year and a half or so in our sort of final presentation at that time that I thought it would be a good idea to involve an individual who has a great deal of experience on um, the ins and outs of project delivery, uh, particularly um, uh, some of the interesting aspects of um, uh, disposal of public land and public-private partnerships and so on. And uh, I can't think of anybody in the province who's better equipped to address this particular subject than Jay, so I'm really pleased he was willing to come tonight. But I should also point out that Jay did not author the work that we're presenting, so he's coming in kind of new to the project at this point. So what I'm going to do is to uh, give you a quick overview of sort of where we left this project uh, in 2010 and, um, and, and give you a sense of what some of the ideas were behind the uh, Esquimo Village project itself. Uh, we were assisted uh, by uh, Landica uh, on the planning side, uh, Durante Krook on the landscape, and Peter Hume on some economic analysis. Um, the, the real purpose of the project, um, frankly, was to look at ways that we could really rejuvenate and vitalize um, the downtown area of Esquimo and to um, capitalize on some of the, uh, particularly the public assets that exist. 
exist here. You, you actually own a great deal of property right in the immediate vicinity. And it was seen as an opportunity whereby um, you, uh, as a municipality, might indeed act in many ways as a catalyst for uh, other development as well that might occur on private lands as part of this rejuvenation uh, process. There were um, areas of, of municipal ownership were characterized by the three sites that are shown in this diagram. Uh, the area where we are, site one, the, uh, the site of the old municipal hall and the public works yard, which um, obviously uh, could be better served than, than it, than it uh, is in its current form. The second site was the area around the recreation center, particularly uh, to the north, uh, where there's a fair bit of surface parking and other municipal holdings. And then site three was the um, Archie Browning area uh, and related parking lots, which was seen to be another uh, potential uh, part of the overall uh, municipal precinct. Um, we had a couple of um, what I call big ideas behind the plan that um, sort of formed the basis of, of the work. Uh, one of them dealt with the public realm and uh, the ideas were really bounded by this notion that maybe a Squimal Road could be a, a better retail street. We call it a high street. Um, it's sort of bits and pieces right now and uh, lacks continuity and, and we thought it could really be the backbone uh, or the sort of main street, if you like, of the uh, village core. And then paralleling that, we had this notion of an east-west greenway that would be the more kind of recreational link that would tie the core together for pedestrians and cyclists. There were the two existing parks that, uh, that of course, would be preserved and, and made part of the, um, really, and are important parts of the public realm. And then the potential for walkways and connections to other parts of the surrounding community. That begins to set up a framework. And then within that framework, one can begin to imagine um, mixed-use development that Again, behind the, the plan here, the, the real sort of key idea is to try and get more people living in this area. The more people we can get in the core area, obviously the, the better uh, uh, grounded it will be for uh, viable retail and a, a really good um, uh, street life. So um, the importance of getting housing into the area was, was paramount. There were also, it seemed to us, opportunities for perhaps some new civic or cultural uses. Um, we thought the lands should be considered in part for, um, for that possibility. Um, and um, you know, perhaps even some of the formal recreation might be expanded in this, in this area. What was unique about the Civic Corps, I think, is the fact that you did have this great mix of, um, of uh, recreational use right in, the, right in the heart of your community. We developed a number of principles. I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, many of the um, uh, things that I've just described to you are actually embodied in these principles. Part of our process um, <coughs> involved a substantive amount of community consultation. I think we had about three open houses. Uh, we had the we had a table set up on uh, one of the Buccaneer days, um, and there were uh, various uh, other techniques like uh, publications on consultation and uh, also a website. So we, um, we did involve people uh, in the community in 2007, 2008, um, and then we also had, a, a, in November of 2009, we had uh, another, uh, another session. And what came out of this process was um, some really strong feelings about Archie Browning and the, the apparent desire to kind of shift the focus maybe more to the municipal hall site to see what some of the real opportunities were for, for site one as we described it. What we heard was very positive actually. We got a lot of great feedback. People were keen to see the core rejuvenated they liked the mix of views. Um, we had a number of people
people um, come forward with ideas about uh, landscaping. There seems to be a really strong interest in uh, the community about trees and plants and using uh, uh, indigenous materials and naturalized native plants. <coughs> and there was certainly a concern expressed about the relationship to immediate neighbors, where there was a uh, existing, um, particularly, for example, on the south side of Carlisle, existing single family homes, uh, noting that that is actually currently zoned for multifamily residential. But it, in its current form, it's, it's really single family. Um, there were a number of, uh, of specific questions, and we show here some of the, some of the feedback that uh, came to those questions. But generally speaking, uh, uh, very positive uh, feedback. Um, a lot of interest in the, um, the, some of the public realm ideas. The, the community now is very car oriented, and I think people have appreciated the ideas about trying to make particularly this part of the community a bit more of a walking neighborhood and encouraging the use of bicycles and so on. We had put forward some fairly aggressive built form concepts, um, upwards of 12 stories, and we got some good feedback from people on that. Uh, some very favorable, some less. Um, one of the things we had proposed in that uh, development form was the idea of a, a terracing of the buildings, and uh, I think we had some good positive response to that idea. There were also um, uh, good response to um, sustainability. I think council had always wanted the project to have a, a sustainable uh, bent and um, we had some good feedback on things like uh, stormwater management and, and uh, certainly the mix of use and so on is a, is a more sustainable uh, planning strategy. Somebody commenting about let's get on with it. <laughs> it's going at too slow a pace. This was one of the um, uh, sort of packages that we put out. It was a summary of uh, community feedback. And uh, it was also um, posted on the project website. I think that was a 2010 document, actually. So if we look at the phase one, what we call phase one, which is located um, around this particular building, it's um, kind of an L-shaped on the site of the old municipal hall and the works yard and then includes uh, properties to the, to the east to develop a site that was of a, a reasonable size and one, one that might attract uh, the potential for some private developer uh, involvement. Um, just a couple of the ideas that were presented at this point and remembering this is early planning is pretty conceptual but um, certainly expressed uh, some of the positive feedback we heard from the public and some of our own thoughts. The idea of moving the town square, or a town square, and locating it right up on Esquimo to the west of the municipal hall was very well received. Having uh, mixed use so that you would end up with retail and restaurants on uh, Esquimo Road. Um, perhaps in, including some civic use or uh, cultural use um, as a possibility and uh, residential uh, as um, really the backbone use. That, that's really the engine that kind of makes the thing work financially. Um, Thornton Walk was a key idea in the site planning, as was an east-west uh, greenway. So one would be able to realize the first piece of the uh, greenway through this, uh, through this phase of development from Park Place over to Fraser Street. A typical floor uh, then above that was really residential. So two residential buildings, I think we refer to them as the east and west buildings. And uh, underground parking, this is a shift, of course, from the norm here in Esquimo. Uh, you're used to service parking. Um, we propose to replace the city hall parking, the municipal hall parking, and putting it underground and then, of course, having sufficient for the, uh, the new uses that would be on the property as well. 
Uh, this resulted in um, uh, some specific numbers, uh, retail restaurant use of about 13,000 square feet, civic use potentially around 20,000 square feet, and then uh, approximately 180,000 square feet of residential use. So it, it was a fair bit of development proposed, but um, we thought an amount that would, um, uh, you know, basically tweak the interest perhaps of the private sector, and also uh, we hoped would would uh, give back some some uh, revenue to the to the to, to the municipality. A couple of the um, cross-sectional diagrams just to describe the um, uses. The west block with um, retail and perhaps civic use shown in the purple there underneath, and then housing about about eight stories all told. And then the uh, east block um, was the, the one that was proposed uh, in a step form at 12 stories, on both sides with um, two levels of underground parking. A couple of the other um, more detailed things we looked at, um, one in particular was the uh, elevation on Carlisle, where we felt it was important that the base of any new residential development have more of a two-story scale so that it was uh, compatible with the existing use across um, Carlisle and then set back for any residential above that. Uh, we did a little bit of visualization. These were really cartoons of what it could look like. Um, the uh, town square, important to have activities on the edge of any public space. So hence retail, restaurants, civic use. Well, these were important things to uh, border uh, a new town square. And uh, Esquimalt Road, um, as described as the kind of high street, we, we would certainly hope that over time, um, Esquimalt Road might become continuous retail. Obviously, there are some existing apartment buildings along there that have no retail base at the moment. And, uh, over time, those might transition into more of a mixed use. And um, the importance of the ground level, this is the uh, sort of south end of Thornton Walk. Um, the importance of establishing a scale and materials that are sort of more pedestrian oriented. Now, um, to support this basic planning approach, we developed um, quite a number of, of guidelines. These are fairly specific, but, but still leave you know, flexibility. I think guidelines are meant to guide. They're not meant to prescribe. So uh, uh, we developed a whole number of, of points um, dealing with mixed use, with the high street, uh, storefront transparency, transparency um, uh, diversity of uh, both retail frontages and residential use. Uh, the importance of private outdoor space, uh, the idea of adaptable housing uh, and amenity and, and uses related to housing. We talked a bit about um, building heights and uh, setbacks and that sort of idea of the terrace buildings, uh, the importance of scale with neighbors, uh, some of, something to do with parking because it, it can be it can be ugly, a lot of people don't like using underground parking and you have to work a little harder to make it nice. And then some ideas on, on, um, on architectural character and signage. Um, and uh, some ideas about um, sustainable, sustainable design, uh, the importance of public art. And specifically the memorials, because there are memorials on site that um, either are left in place or relocated. And then, frankly, if they're left in place, it makes some of the development a little bit more challenging. So we were going to propose that uh, some of the memorials might actually be relocated. And, and actually, council had made a decision in 2002 to that effect. So it was not inconsistent with past decisions of council. We went through a similar uh, layering of guidelines for the uh, for the landscape and the public realm that uh, Jake Durante worked on, um, which dealt with a whole range of subjects that, uh, that are important in that regard. Um, Jane developed some ideas about the specific landscape, the plaza, and uh, it's quite a series
series of uh, interrelated outdoor spaces because we thought that the, given the uh, orientation of the library, it was important to still have the drop off for the library and a little bit of short term service parking for that. So uh, that was a, a part of this uh, planning process as well. And um, Jane developed a number of ideas for, um, you know, right down to some ideas for benches and, and other things. And then uh, quite a bit of work on some of the plant materials. Um, we were really intrigued by the interest that a number of the members of the public had about this aspect of the project. And uh, so she uh, worked a bit on that as well. So that's a general overview of the ideas behind this, this project. And um, I thought that it might be appropriate to um, uh, wait for Jay's input uh, on, on this as you move into your uh, in-camera session, as Jay will want to speak more specifically about some of the nuts and bolts of how this thing might work. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to open it up to Council for questions. Uh, Councillor yeah. Hungley. Um, thank you, and to you too, Norm. Um, it's uh, interesting to uh, have your uh, five-year uh, <laughs> uh, sort of perspective. Um, it's my recollection that in the last council, the council of the day uh, wanted to see the memorials retained in their place. And so the way that the, I can't remember exactly how the wording was, was to prefer that they ret be retained in their location and only moved if there was no other way to work around. So I, I think there's a high sentiment in the municipality about the, the leaving them where they are. Uh, and so uh, I'm hoping that there would be, when it comes time, that there will be some creativity that could allow one or all of them to remain in place. Uh, but if not, then they would have, they have to have a whole process about um, relocating them if, if we have to go down. Thank you. I think uh, it would be helpful to have clarification of those motions uh, yes. because it, there are there were specific guidelines around uh, the Cairn versus the other Davis Law. Yes. Yeah. So, any other questions for Norm at this time? You must have done a good job, Norm. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I'm now going to move on to public question and comment period. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so move. <laughs> Take your All those oh, in favor? Okay. Any opposed? None. Motion is